Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Three Stacks in this thing, representing Team King of Games, and um, today I'm going over a deck that it's been a while since I updated. Uh, the reason why I've been up, I haven't been updating my Dark Lords, and I used to update them like crazy, believe it or not. I did a lot of variations with them. It's because I sold them to my teammate. Um, I sold them to him, and uh, it's it's just been like I don't want to pick the deck back up because it's already like you know how he says in the family. And uh, basically, like, whenever I needed, you know, like, hey, I need a deck profile, people are asking for an update, I bought it. So I bought it from him. Um, this is Dark Lord variation number 19, I believe. It's either 19 or 18. Um, but all the different builds, like, they were all different. Like, the Star Seraph one, the, uh, the, just the straight dark, and then the rank 8 spam, and then the Dark Lord, Dark Lord tunes. Then like the Dark Lord Arcana Force Loop, and then like the Vanity's Fiend. It was like a lot of builds. Um, with this one, it's more or less it's pure. Um, and I'm not doing the uh, the stuff with uh, Link Rebo and uh, Level Eater and One for and all that because I don't have those cards. And um, I think that build's interesting. I would have to try that out for variation but number twenty. But let's hop right into this deck profile. Uh, so starting off with monsters, three copies of Isho, the best Dark Lord. Uh, she's the twenty nine booty, level ten. Uh, happens to just pitch herself from hand in another uh, Dark Lord and just draw two. She's really, really good. Uh, this deck, uh, there, it's like a lot of decks in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh that can draw, but this deck is one of those decks that overdoes that job. And um, that was its sh that was its strength. Um, so when I was playing Dark Lords, whenever I'd side deck, I never did not see the cards that I side deck, and I would side deck really, really good cards. So I would just win because of that. I um, mean, this deck it has no problem with drawing the cards it needs. So when you play good cards. Like, if I wanted to play competitive right now, I'd play all the hand traps, you know, Ash, Maxi, Gamma, uh, Droll, you know, Ogre, then I would see those cards. Like, inevitably, I will see them, unless they Droll me and I don't have Gamma. Uh, three copies of Superbia. Superbia is, you know, not Ichil. Superbia is the best one. He is. He's not a hard for once per turn. He works for any fairies. I even did Dark Lord Hail to Perfection, which, you know... I might have to do an update on that and do Dark Lord Herald to Perfection again because Dark Lord Herald was, it was broke. If you guys have not seen that, look it up on my channel. Just literally search Dark Lord Herald to Perfection Zodiac and you'll see something crazy. <laughs> like my deck recipes, I don't even know how I come up with them, but I just do. I uh, went three Superbia, he's amazing. He's just Monster Reborn that's not hard once returned for any fairies. I used to use him with Elder Entity Norden. Summon him, summon Norden, Norden, bring the stick back and then stick chair combo off of that. It was crazy. Uh, but that was like a different build with like different cards. Um, this one's just pure. Two copies of Nassin. I like the card, but I don't want to see three of it. I mean, I don't want to see more than one of it. He's a major neck. You discard two Dark Lord cards just to summon him. Um, sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's like, dang, I have no choice. I, this is the only way I'm gonna get field presence. So he's good in that sense. Like sometimes you just need the field presence, but I don't see too much value in the card. Um, he has the effect that all Dark Lords have. The newer ones where. They can pay a thousand light points, apply the effect of a Dark Lord spell a trap, and then shuffle it to the deck after that. Then we have uh, Douchebag. I always call it this card Douchebag. Um, I don't know why they called him Amdouche. They should have just named him Douchebag. But something weird that I'm on, it's like a theory. He has the same stats as Harold, and he's level six. Uh, he's level six. So I'm like, is this Harold of Perfection's brother or something? I don't know. I don't know, but he, 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 yeah. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, Tasmanian Devil. Just one. He, he's like a hand trap. He protects your Dark Lords from being destroyed by anything. Uh, you just pitch him instead and they don't die. Then uh, Zerato. I actually have more. Like, here's all the cards that you could play. Like, you know, Full Force. You could play Vanity's Fiend. Like, these are cards from other variations. I have another Zerato. And then these cards. Uh, this skips your opponent's turn. Like, when this deck goes first and resolves this, it kills you because it skips your turn. And then next turn, you just attack with everything. And it's nothing but beaters. Um, so, like, there's a lot of cool things that Dark Lords can do that other decks just simply can't. So, this deck is awesome. Uh, but Zerato is just a right uh, Yankee. You pitch a uh, you pitch a dark monster, and then you destroy all monsters your opponent controls. You would send this card to the grave at the end phase, but normally you'll overlay with him or you'll link summon with him. Uh, so he, he you never get that drawback. So he's just basically a one sided card. And then two Christia. Uh, you this is the card that you're trying to draw into. Like this deck's draw power is catered to Christia. It's like every deck has a special summon right now, and Christia is really really good. And it's like a little bit of a soft lock, even if they um, stop the Christia, like this deck still plays. Um, but basically, you're trying to make like a really, really fat, juicy board. Like the minimum board you want to make is um, Felgrand with Christia. And that's a really, really strong board to me, Felgrand, Christia. And um, like when they break it, this deck's recovery is really, really insane. You have um, double reborn, and then you have like all the searches, all the draws. Like you don't have bad hands. It's crazy. Uh, two blue boys, because this deck doesn't have a normal summon. So. 
I didn't want to dark, do Dark Lord Ukabak. He sucks. He sucks like dick. He really does. Excuse my language. Um, Blue Boy is a lot better. A lot. The Spellbook engine helps. Just It does what the deck already does. Drawing cards is fun. And the one the one hand trap, since this is like more or less a budget deck, uh, we're not doing like all the crazy hand traps. Just just a maxi. And you wouldn't believe how often you draw the maxi in this deck. Believe it or not. Then for spells, this is the bread and butter. This is the goo. Uh, three banishment. It's it's a uh, rota for any Dark Lord card. Uh, so when I was doing the the Herald of Perfection Dark Lords, I was playing three of this, and then like one or I think I was playing like one or two contacts, and then three Itchels, two Superbia, and like one other name, and that was it. It was like a small Dark Lord engine, but it was amazing. Um, but yeah, three banishment just straddles it out. Uh, three Monster Reborns. It summons any Dark Lord from the graveyard. Uh, you're always gonna use this to summon Superbia, and then use Superbia to summon something else, and then that's something else. You're gonna shuffle this. And then summon something else again. It's really, really cool um, how this deck comes back off of, like, one card. Um, literally, like, you can just... You have this one card in hand. You have Loaded Grave. This deck loads your grave really easy. You play this, and you get three monsters off of this. It's crazy. So it's, like, really, really hard to grind with this deck when it has recurring beat sticks every single turn. Uh, three copies of Trade-In. Trade-In is just really good. You have so many targets for it. It's, like, always live. Uh, it's a really, really good discard outlet also because you need to load your grave with this deck. Um... The Grave is a big pool of resources that this deck takes advantage of. And then 3 Allure, everything's dark except for Blue Boys and Christia. But um, it just it makes dumb sense. Like, why not play Allure? It's a really, really good card. Um, it, it helps you. And then it's all gas, no breaks. So we're also playing three copies of Into the Void. Um, Into the Void, just, it's amazing. Um, naturally, you spit out your whole hand. At, like, every single first turn, you spit out your whole hand. And that's what I was realizing in playtesting. I'm like, I don't, I don't... Do anything like I make a full board and then I set one of the traps, like rebellion or um the uh, whichever one I feel like is necessary, rebellion or enchantment, and then I have like no cards in hand, so I was like, why don't I just start playing into the void since I spit out my hand anyways and just get more draw power? Uh, so it's like just three upstarts, and then this this spells the goo. This is really really it's really powerful. Um, three full is very good. So believe it or not, this card is insane. I'm so. Of course, whenever I play this, it comes as a package deal for me. I love doing this with Metal Pulse Fusion because it's like an upstart. But when you have Dark Lords on field, let's say, for example, you have Itchel, the main one. And you're like, dang, I don't have a contact and I don't have a contact. I'm sorry, I don't have a contact and I don't have a banishment. Or you're like, dang, Sleeper's on the board. And you bait out the Sleeper, right? And you're like, I need to kill this Sleeper. So you play Foolish Barrel Goods. You dump one of these traps. Then you use Itchel to apply their effect. You'll either destroy Sleeper. These don't target. They don't target. This destroys any card in the field, and this takes control of a face of monster. Neither one of them target. You don't have to believe me. You could just read the card. Um, so you just dump this, and then you kill Sleeper, or you take him and use his effect, and you just you win. It's really, really savage. So Fool's Barrel Goods like is a game changer. It's really, really powerful. Um, sometimes I use it like as an extender to basically um like when I don't have a card, like it becomes an extra copy of any of these, like contact and dark lord banishment. Because sometimes, like, you have to search out Contact and, like, Itchel if you don't have Itchel. So then, ultimately, you can't get the trap. But if you play Foolish Barrel Goods, you still get the traps. And then, during either player's turn as a quick effect, the Dark Lords will apply these and just get it. So, Foolish Barrel Goods is just, it's the goods, man. It's really, really good. <laughs> no pun intended. Yes, pun intended. Uh, two Spellbook of Secrets for the Spellbook engine. I was thinking about playing three of it, but it's a hard ones per turn. And I didn't want to play too many hard ones per turn effects. Like, it's bad enough that you play three Banishment and three Contact and those hard ones per turns, and then three Full Spell Goods. That's a hard ones per turn, too. So you have nine spells that are hard ones per turn. I was like, I'm not doing any more of three ofs that are hard ones per turn. And then two Knowledge. Then we also play <laughs> two Desires. Because, <laughs> like, this deck don't care. Like, there's nothing you really banish that matters. Like, you get one Superbia, and one, con uh, one Superbia, one Contact, and the Itchel. Like, you can banish everything, and it won't even matter. Um, this deck just lives off of the graveyard. So when you get your cards in graveyard, the cards in deck don't matter no more. That's why you play all the draw power. Like, literally, every spell that's not contact is just pure engine. Like, it, it's just pure engine. Uh, upstart and one day of peace. Uh, one day of peace saves your life. Upstart is just like, why not? It's not even a 40-card deck, but I'm playing Upstart. I don't care. Uh, Metal Pulse Fusion, it's the spice. Uh, it's a really, really saucy card. I like it. And then the traps of the deck are Dark Lord Rebellion and Enchantment. Um, so these let you send a Dark Lord monster from your field or your hand and apply the effects. So this one destroys any card on the field, and this one takes control of the face of monster. You can double up on these, so this is like the Dryden of the deck, but it's better because it doesn't target at all. 
So you can flip and activate this and then pop a card. Then you can use the Dark Lords. And um, the cool thing is when you read them, they say that uh, during either player's turn, you pay a thousand target one Dark Lord spell a trap in your graveyard. Apply that target's effect and then shuffle that target into the deck. And um, they target for cost. So um, something that I've been wondering if I can do, I never ask because I'm not really like a major Dark Lord player, is when these are on field, like I've always wondered if you can pay a thousand for each of them and target the same card for cost and then apply its effect and shuffle into the deck. Because if you can, then you can destroy three cards off of this one effect. And everything that's hard once per turn, the Dark Lords fix that because they can apply their effects again. And you can still activate it. Like this says you can only activate it once per turn, right? You can play it, then activate it again, and it's 100% legal. Um, so that's why I was like, just one of each of the traps. These are like the best cards. Um, for playing competitive, this is the only thing that gives you interference on your opponent's turn. Like when you get the um the Felgrand Christia with one of the traps, like it's a really, really soft lock, but it's good because they have to play through the negation. They have to try to not special summon and then still get their cards popped and taking control of. Um, so I like it. Uh, that sums up the main deck. It should be 44 cards. And if not, I think it's 45, but it's it's above 40. Um, the reason why you can play more than 40 cards in Dark Lords is because they play too much draw power anyways, right? So the pro you don't have the problem of, oh, I'm playing more than 40 cards, so I'm not going to see this card. You see everything. Like, I decked out first turn. It's, it's just it's too fast. Uh, the extra deck, two firewall, Borload, Trigate, Decode, Proxy, Akashic. Your monsters are all dark fairies, and they're all fairies, so, you know, Akashic is just too good. Other than Blue Boy, um, but even, you know, Christia's fairies. So it's just a fairy deck, which fairies are my favorites. Uh, Hulk Harbinger and Felgram, like, best rank 8 options. Uh, you can play, like, Divine Lancelot, dude, but he actually, you don't have a choice but to negate. And because he's not optional, he doesn't help with his next play style, because you're trying to set up with these... And then, like, a Dark Lord on field or a Christie on field with the traps in the field or the grave or, you know, like, like somewhere, you know. And with the, the Lancelot dude on field, like, he automatically negates your own Dark Lord. So that's horrible. So I just played these. And then this is for pressure. Um, like, you make this. You do this. You take a monster. And then you can do the enchantment, take another monster. And then you link all three of them into deco. Like, I did that. It was a savage combo. And, like, you can't attack or anything, but it's like you take their monsters, and instead of killing them, you just link summon with them. And then, you know, you make decode. Like, if it makes sense, I hope that I'm making sense. Like, you use this effect, take control of a monster, you use the Dark Lord, or you use the trap itself. Um, apply the trap's effect, um, which is an enchantment. This is, like, the best card in the deck um, that's not a monster. And you just use this. You take another one of the monsters. There are three effects. You make decode. That comes up, and if you don't do that, you just make this... You make this, then you pop a card, then you make this, and then you attack twice. So this combo, this package breaks boards, and I like it a lot. And um, I am mixing rank 10s. I don't know what I did with my rank 10s, but you should be playing Super Dreadnought Door and then Super Door, the one that makes it itself unaffected by all card effects. So um, I just don't know where they are. And then for rank 7s, you play a Draco Sack, uh, Red Eye Flare Metal, and Tomahawk. Tomahawk actually allows you to make a lot of these easier, but Dark Lord's like... OTK and they spam like they special summon a lot a lot a lot so it's easy to link summon this deck and your graveyard is like infinite resource then you have like firewall to make the infinite resource of your graveyard even like more redundant um so yeah that's pretty much the deck profile I show you guys all the cards that you can play I also play star seraphs in this once upon a time but that was once upon a time uh, but yeah God bless you guys thank you so much make good choices and don't hurt your brain cells uh I'm gonna be doing I think like a couple updates just on decks that you guys haven't seen updates so you can see what I'm doing with them at the moment. And then also, um, I got to get that True King Dino deck profile from my uh, my homeboy Colton. Um, he's going to be doing the True King Dino. He's the True King Dino guy. Um, he's like, he's played Dinos faithfully. He, you know, like even when they were a thing, like he's playing them. And then I got to get like a couple other deck profiles people are asking me for. Um, I think the uh, the Insector deck profile, I forgot who asked for Insectors, but I don't know if I can do it. I looked around and... Like, nobody I knows has those cards. And it's like, when you look online, certain of the cards are, like, out of stock. Like, I can't, it's hard to find. Like, I'm going to try, but if I can't do the Insector deck, for, uh, the Insector deck profile, just know that I tried. And um, if, like, I can make it up to you, I guess just name a deck that I know I can get, and I'll do a deck profile on it. But, yeah, that, that's our team's specialties. Like, we specialize in deck profiles. Um, I, I really like that. But we're going to go ahead and just sign out and call it a night. Peace.